This is my do-it-yourself 1000 watt, 100 amp hour solar generator power station. In today's video, I'll show you step by step how I built this solar generator, all the parts I used, including product links down in the video description. Plus, I'll show you the two different ways that I power my solar generator, from a wall outlet and from the power of the sun. Stick around to the end of this video and I'll share with you just how much this thing costs to build. Here's a quick rundown of the main components that I'm using for my solar generator build. At the heart of my solar generator is a 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. We have a 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter for AC power. I've got USB ports and 12 volt ports for DC power a PWM solar charge controller, and a plug-in wall charger. I'm also installing this battery monitor shunt. That way I can keep an eye on how much power my solar generator actually has. The box that I'm using for my solar generator build is this Craftsman Trade Stack box. I chose this box for three reasons. It has wheels, it's pretty sturdy, and it's big enough to house everything I need. Construction of my solar generator will be in four phases. The first phase is to secure the battery and inverter. They're the largest two components of my build, so I'm going to secure these and build around it. Phase two will be to prepare the box itself by mounting the power ports, the charging ports, and install LED lights. Phase three, build the control panel and phase four, the wiring. To begin phase one, I'm gonna locate the permanent spot for the inverter and the battery. They're the two largest components, so I'm gonna figure this out and then we're gonna build everything around them. For my control panel and structure inside the box, I'm gonna use this half inch plywood. I'll cut the shapes out that I need out of cardboard and then I'll cut them out on my plywood. So here's what I came up with for my battery trapping system. I built a little frame under there that is the same shape as the battery. And I drilled some holes in there to get some air vintage going on. So this thing's gonna set right on top of the battery and it's gonna trap it into place. Over here I have my inverter board. This board is gonna sit right in there and the inverter is going to mount right to the side of it so by the time i put in my battery trapping board which is also going to be my control panel i'm going to mount my bus bars and everything right to this board and the whole system is going to lock everything into place let me show you how i'm going to secure these wooden parts to the box to secure everything to the box, I'm going to be using some drywall screws and I mounted some cleats down inside this box. I've got a cleat over there that I screwed to this rib and then I have another cleat over here that I screwed to that rib. And then I also have this ledge on the inverter board. So this thing's going to set right down on top of there. And the screws will go down into the cleats and then I'll screw it down onto the ledge. And that will secure everything into place. Before I can actually screw down and mount this wood, I'm gonna move on to phase two of my solar generator build, which is to prepare the box itself. I'm gonna be drilling and cutting holes for all of my power ports for power in and power out. I'm also going to cut a hole to mount my cooling fan. Before I start phase two, I want to thank Lead Time Power for helping to make today's video possible. Lead Time Power makes all kinds of lithium iron phosphate batteries. They make chargers, inverters, and accessories too. Consider using Lead Time Power for your next project, like I did. If you use the referral link down in the video description and code Mr. Fred, you'll get a discount on their website at checkout.
For power coming into the box, we have two different sources. I have a wall charger and then I have solar charging. My wall charger uses an Anderson connector and then my solar charger is gonna use an SAE two pin connector. I've got mounting plates for both. Let's get those holes cut in. That's both of my charging ports. I'm gonna to wait to mount these until a little bit later. Now I'm gonna cut holes for all my ports for power coming out. I'm gonna have AC power coming out. That's gonna be coming from the 100 watt pure sine wave inverter. And then I'm gonna have 12 volt power coming out. I'm gonna have 12 volt ports and then I'm gonna have USB ports coming out. I also need to figure out where I'm gonna mount my battery monitor. Here I'm using a hole saw to remove most of the plastic for the battery monitor. To finish the hole off, I used my carpet knife. To mount the AC outlets, I used a Forstner bit to drill the holes and a razor knife to square them up. Here I'm marking out and drilling the four holes for my 12 volt ports and my USB ports. I didn't have the right size bit, so I reamed out the holes with a mini drum sander until the holes were just the right size. These 12 volt plugs are a socket style plug and they use a keeper nut to hold them in place. To illuminate the power port area of my solar generator, I found these really cool license plate LED lights. They're super easy to mount. Just drill a hole and screw on the nuts and washers. Before I start putting this thing together, I mounted a bunch of LED lights. I'll wire them all together in the wiring phase. Phase two is pretty much complete. All of the holes are cut into the box. I've got my power ports installed and my charging ports and my cooling fan is also installed. Battery is secured. I've got the inverter secured. Now it's time to move on to phase three, which is to lay out my control panel. Here I've added this shelf. You can see this shelf here. I'm gonna mount that down once I get everything mounted. But here's what I came up with for my control panel. I've got my PWM charge controller on the shelf. I've got an ANL fuse. That's gonna fuse the 12 volt system. All of the 12 volt system is gonna run through that panel. That's gonna power up USBs and the 12 volt power ports. Then to power the whole system, we're gonna use a shutoff switch. So we'll go from the battery to the shutoff switch to the red bus bar. To power up the black bus bar, we're gonna go through the monitor shunt. That's the lead time monitor shunt. That's the monitor there. And then we'll power up this guy. This is our pure sine wave inverter. We'll put the red wire here on this 100 amp ANL. We'll run that around and connect it to the red bus bar, and then of course the black will just go to the black. Now I'm ready to start phase four of the solar generator build, which is the wiring phase. To power up the inverter and to run power from the battery to the bus bars, I'm using number four gauge solid copper wire. This is actually welding lead wire. I'll drop an affiliate link for this, and of course all the other products down in that video description. To make up my cable pieces, I have a hammer lug crimper, solid copper ring terminals, a two pound hammer, and heat shrink tubing. The Temco hammer lug crimper tool is perfect for achieving proper mechanical connections when crimping thick cables like this number four gauge wire. Too good wax with a two pound hammer makes a perfect crimp. And I like to use heat shrink tubing to seal the ends of my copper ring terminals. I chose not to use the supply cables that came with my inverter so that I could use the four gauge 100% copper wire instead. This allowed me to make my cables custom length tailored to my build. Here I'm attaching the negative inverter wire to the negative bus bar. 
My system is not hot yet, so there is no risk for a short as I begin my wiring. Next, I'm connecting my negative bus bar to the lead time battery monitor shunt and I'm tightening down the lugs. Now I'm connecting the negative battery terminal to the other side of the monitor shunt. This is the positive feed cable for the inverter. I'm attaching it to the 100 amp ANL fuse. And I'm connecting the other side of the fuse to the positive bus bar. All of the power for my system is going to run through a master shutoff switch. I'm installing the switch in line between the positive battery terminal and the positive bus bar. All of our number four gauge wire is installed from the battery through the switch to the bus bar and our inverter is hooked up. To access the inverter outlets from the outside of the box, I'm turning these AC outlet ports into mini extension cords by adding these extension cord replacement ends. By doing it this way, I can just plug these in to these other extension cords and plug the whole thing in. To hook up the lead time battery shunt, I'm going to remove the monitor from the hole here. Here's the shielded wire that came with my unit. I'm just going to stuff it in the hole and I'm going to put it under my control panel down there out of the way. Both ends of the shielded wire have plugs on them. One's for the monitor and one's for the shunt. The battery monitor shunt came with this little red wire and a screwdriver. This is to run the power line to the positive. That's going to power up the LED screen. Let's get that hooked up. This is where we need to connect that wire. It's not an easy place to get to. It's so difficult to get to, I actually had to remove the shunt to put the wire in there. But that's where it goes. It goes on the side of the P, and then we just tighten it up. I could run this to the positive bus bar, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to run this instead to the load side of my charge controller. That way, it's circuit protected. There is a whole process to setting up and programming the monitor shunt, but for now, I've got it installed. Here's what's left of the wiring phase. I need to run feed lines to the six blade fuse block to the bus bars, and then I need to wire up my four 12 volt power ports back to the fuse block. And then I need to wire my LED lights on two circuits. Over here on the power inside, I need to wire up my solar power port and PWM charge controller as well as my Anderson power port from a wall charger. Don't forget, at the end, when I'm all finished, I'll break down the cost for the entire project. So I'm running that number 10 gauge wire from the bus bar through the 40 amp ANL over to the positive side of the six blade fuse block. Over here on the negative side, I'm also running that 10 gauge wire all the way over to the negative bus bar. Wiring the number 10 gauge wire was a pretty simple process. I just crimped on ring terminals, added some heat shrink, and connected it from the bus bars through the ANL fuse to the fuse block. For the two 12 volt sockets and the two USB sockets, I'm gonna be running 14 gauge wire all the way back to the fuse block. And of course, each one will be on its own circuit, protected by its own fuse. I've got four positive and four negative wire leads, all measured and made up. Let's get them installed. For now, I've wired in my cooling fan with my LED lights, and it has manual off, high, and low. I plan on wiring up a thermostat later. I've got two circuits left. That's going to be for my LED lights. I've got three switches, one here for the lights on the inside of the box. I've got one here. That's going to be for the bright LEDs on the outside of the box. 
And then I've got a switch here for the license plate lights to illuminate my power ports. I'm gonna do 10 amps for my LED lights and then 15 amps for the other circuits. To hook up the solar charging port, I ran the positive and negative wires over to the charge controller with the terminals marked solar charging with a little solar panel. To connect the charge controller to the battery, I connected the wires from the battery terminals to the bus bars. To hook up this wall charger power port, all I had to do was hook up the positive to the positive bus bar and the negative to the negative bus bar. It's time to test out all of the systems and devices of this DIY solar generator. Let's turn it on. It's the moment of truth. The lead time battery shunt looks like it's working. To program the battery shunt properly, I need to drain that battery down to zero. So I'll cover that process in a future video. Let's start with the 100 watt pure sine wave inverter. Next, let's test out all of the 12 volt ports. Looks like both of our USB outlets have power too. Now let's test the LED lights. Now we'll test the wall charger with the Anderson plug and then we'll move on to the solar charging. This is a 100 watt solar panel. Let's plug it in. It looks like it's charging perfect. Here's the cost breakdown for the solar generator power station. There's the price, there's the numbers at the time of making this video. Now you could save some money by going to eBay, looking on different websites, and possibly even going to Harbor Freight for some of these connectors. But there's the numbers. What do you guys think about that total number? I really want to know what you guys think about this DIY solar generator. Leave me a comment or feel free to even ask me a question. I'll be making two more videos with this power station. One will be a performance testing video. We'll find out what this thing can power and for how long. I'll make a second video as well for how to build a 100 watt suitcase solar panel. When I'm finished with those videos, I'll put them right here. I'm glad you watched and I hope you'll watch again.